Yes, uh, we're back and uh, just before the home run, um, we have the final segment of the program today and that is looking at the rebranding of Bielsa State and um, elections come, it's gone, a year after the governor, Governor Sereke Dixon, is looking at rebranding the state. It means that something was wrong somewhere in doing the brand and uh, it's being looked at. And there are so many ways of doing that. And one of the things that has come to the fore in recent time is the issue of the state passing a law that allows it to have its own anthem, that allows it to have um, its own coat of arm, and also its own flag, and all belongs to by Elsa State. So we've got in the studio this morning to discuss the rebranding and all of those uh, components or uh, materials of office of uh, by Elsa State that's being instituted as law. We've got to discuss it with us this morning. Uh, the by Elsa State Commissioner for Culture and Ijo National Affairs, and that's Dr. Felix Stodola. Thank you. It's great to have you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And uh, of course, we also have in the studio this morning, sitting next to him, Honorable Fred Agwedi, who is SA to Bias the State Government on Political Affairs. It's a great pleasure to be here. And then we have a legal practitioner who is also going to dissect what this law says and uh, look at the antecedent and uh, whatever else. We've got Mr. Ikejuku Ikeji. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Great to have you. So let's let's start with the Commissioner for Culture and Ijo National Affairs. Now, I guess it comes under your portfolio, if you want to look at it, our national affairs, the Ijo people. Um, it's led to the rebranding, and part of it is an, an anthem, uh, a coat of arms, and, and also a flag. What does that signify for you? How does that become a way to redefine or rebrand the state? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I just want to correct uh, a little part of it. <coughs> you said a year after, no. Uh, uh, I mean, after elections. We, we are not up to a year in office. We are just about five months into office. The okay. government was just elected in February, okay. February 14th specifically. Now, <coughs> after elections, that, which is very common in Nigeria, there is that sort of division amongst the people because of the rivalry between the political parties here and there. This person sees himself as PDP, the other one sees himself as ACN, and so forth. So there is that divide amongst the people. And it's, it, it, it's not helpful to development if the people do not see themselves beyond political parties or beyond such divisions. And so in order to ensure that development gets to the grassroots and all the people are carried along, government decided to come up with this issue of rebranding bias states. We want to rebrand bias states. This issue is to mobilize our people, bring them together as one, let them see themselves as one, as a unity, a, un a unified body, and not just as different entities, so that mobilization, so that the development we are talking about can have its effect. If you look like places like America, Americans don't see themselves as Republicans or Democrats. They see themselves as Americans. And that's what we want Bayesa to look like. We want Bayesans to see themselves as Bayesans and them Nigerians, and not as uh, differentiated by political parties. Not Nigerians first, then Bayesans? We are Niger it's because we are Bayesans that we are Nigerians. If we are not Bayesans, then we can't be Nigerians. Okay. That, that's, that's how we see. So we mobilize ourselves. We are mobilizing the people to support the developmental programs that we have put in place. And so the, the slogans or the emblems we have put in place, we are not the first to do such things. Remember, I just saw one, the Lagos one, when the commissioner was speaking. I saw the slogan and the uh, coat of arm of Lagos State. Ocean State has one. Uh, Ogun State has one. Kwara State has one. Even River State, where Bayesa was created from, has one. They all have their slogans, they all have their flags, they all have their coats of arms. 
And so we are just doing something new that is not different from what any other person have done. You uh, are putting it, uh, making it a legal document and it, backed by law. It's, it's, we, have to, we have to make it legal. I think the legal man will talk more about it because they, they are, uh, he's going to talk more about it. But we, have, uh, we are not going against the law. We have provisions in the law that tells us that we can do this. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Since you say so, let's switch to the lawyer. <laughs> How true yes. is it? Yes. Is any state allowed to have these trappings, these um, Obviously. Liv livery? Obviously, statutorily speaking, mm -hmm. um, two two statutes here: the Constitution and the um, uh, Flags and Coat of Arms Act of Nigeria. We call it Chapter Chapter F Party of the laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004. Mm -hmm. Section 4 thereof is very clear in admitting and um, allowing states to have its own their own flags as they desire insofar as it does not subsume the f flag of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. Having said that, Section 2, Sub 2 of the 1999 Constitution actually makes it very clear that Nigeria is a, Nigeria is a federation. And if you look at if, uh, what the meaning of a federation is, you realize that there ought to be a stronger pull of the centrifugal forces over and above the centripetal forces. That is to say mm. that the centrifugal forces, the forces okay. that decentralize, that allow for more strength to the constituent parts ought to be stronger than the forces that get that um, allow for more strength to the center so that when you when you are when you realize that situation you find out that each state each constituent state ought to have its own identity within the larger identity and um, to that extent the the biasa identity presently just like all other states have done is a very very good um, um, step towards the realization of the true federalism that we are saying. When I first heard about the, the, the law, I was very skeptical. I tried to be critical of it. In fact, I reasoned and um, reasoned and reasoned, and by the time I looked at the synopsis of um, the law, and I got some snippets of the contents of the law, I, I, I said, bravo to mm -hmm. the state government. Okay. Yes. Now, Honorable, um, yes. it's one thing to have your own flag and your own anthem and your coat of arms. Um, aside those, to the ordinary Bielsen, okay, we have a new coat of arms, we have this, this, this. What about development to the state? What is this new government bringing along? Uh, the new government of uh, Henry Serake is bringing a lot on board and they are already evident in bias estate. Uh, the essence, uh, you know, of this coat of arms, flag and all that, is to ensure that we open up, we create an identity for the state, for the Zoma, to attract ecotourism, uh, eco to attract or make bias, uh, you know, uh, tourist heaven to the world over, so that you know, you know where you are going, from whichever part of the world you are coming to Nigeria. You know where you are going. I'm going to Zonland, I'm going to Bayasa to invest or for tourism. In terms of physical infrastructure, Bayasa is bouncing back again. If you get back, if you travel to Bayasa now, you will see roads being opened up. You see roads that were not initially dualized now being dualized. You know, you see airport project. Uh, from the former place where the airport was uh, 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 sited, where the deeds of skeletal work, we felt that it was not a good place for you to locate uh, an airport. And for you to attract the world, you must have an airport where the people will land, you know, and enter into uh, every part of the state. You know, so road construction is going on. The government has created a conducive security environment to attract the world over to Bayesa. You know, physical security, uh, a lot of uh, technology has been deployed into securing the state, and there's peace and tranquility right now in Yanagua, the state capital, and around, you know, all the local governments and communities in the state. Of course, the government has also gone further to declare free education. Free education in terms of up uniforms. Level up to the uh, from the secondary school level to the primary school level okay. where you have free uniforms for all the students free books for all the students and then you know infrastructural development we are pulling down all the old structures and bringing in structures that will bring in ICT training you know and all kinds of modern uh, education that is required to bring up our children to world standard of course in terms of healthcare 
the government is establishing a general hospital in every local government headquarter. Pardon me. Uh, is there any law compelling every child of school age to be in school? That is being done. Yes. There is. Yes, that's okay. been done. Yes. All right. All right. Let's let's uh, <coughs> think about the anthem. I, I'm quite interested in finding out what's in the and the anthem of the state. What does it say? What what is the message there? Because you listen to the anthem of Nigeria, our national anthem. There's a message there. There is something it inspires in you as a Nigerian. Okay, well, uh, the anthem, uh, like we say, we are mobilizing our people. We are mobilizing our people to support development. We have thrown the anthem open to the public of Bias State for everyone to make an input on what the anthem to look like. So it uh, is, so is it proposed? Verge. Yes, yes. Oh, there's, uh, there's no anthem yet. There, there's no anthem. Okay. If uh, if you listen to the radio in Bayelsa, it's being announced okay. that every entries, entries every okay. Bayelsa should make entries, and we said should be a unifying song, okay. a song that unifies the people. Okay. I I must tell you certain things. Um, apart from the re I mean the rebranding we are doing, uh, we have looked back at mm -hmm. history. We have looked back at Oloibri, where oil was first discovered. It's now a neglected place because oil is no longer there. The experts have also said oil will soon be a finished product. It will, it will leave. It, it will dry. finish. Dry it will dry off. And what will people fall back to? Our environment has been destroyed by this oil exploration. And if we don't use the little that we have, the so-called 13%. Well, have left. Yes, we have left. <laughs> the 13%. Even about, it, was it last month, we had uh, the Delta State Government came up with Beyond Oil, mm. a symposium, a conference. So people of the Niger Delta are trying to look beyond oil. And this rebranding we are doing is also looking beyond oil. We want to bring ecotourism. We want to bring tourism to the place. And we are also, therefore, saying... Uh, going into different areas of development in the state. We are looking at agriculture because one of the things that oil has done to the environment in the Niger Delta is to destroy the uh, main occupation of the people, which is farming and fishing. Now, so by rebranding, we want to use the little that is left before it dries up mm -hmm. to now bring back agriculture, then bring back ecotourism so that we can use that to survive once oil dries up. You mentioned aqua tourism as mm. well. Yeah. Um, how do you intend to do that in waters that are heavily polluted? Yeah. What, what are your plans? Well, um, the oil, uh, the pollution is something that we have been crying about. That uh, Our land has been polluted, our rivers have been polluted. But if you travel across the length and breadth of Bayelsa State and many other states in the Niger Delta, you will see beautiful beaches, which governments have not capitalized on. And when we're talking about this aqua tourism and eco tourism, we want to develop our beaches. Our, our people travel abroad to the Bahamas, to the Caribbean, uh, just to go and stay in beaches. Mm -hmm. And the white people, uh, uh, I mean, they, they love beaches. But we that have it in abundance, we have failed to develop them. So this, the government under Serake Dixon is serious in developing these beaches so that we can attract uh, investors, not just investors, then tourism. Attracts foreign people to visit these places. So we have them in abundance and we are working towards it. Not only that, our heritage, mm -hmm. there are the, the stories around uh, our history. Uh, you, if you recollect in the past, Nigeria survived with palm oil. You see, the Bayesa and the Job people, we've always survived Nigeria in one way or the other. And oil is always connected to us. In okay. the past, it was palm oil. To add a little to okay. what mm -hmm. uh, he has said, uh, of course, yes, uh, waters are highly polluted. But, you know, just uh, a few days ago, the government set up an environment committee, you know, to look at how to uh, uh, address the issue of environmental degradation that has been done to the environment and to the waterways. And of course, particularly you and the Shekiri woman, you know Bayasa shares boundary with the entire state. And in the 70s, 
every weekend you see foreigners traveling down to the coast we have natural beaches these are not beaches that are created by man natural beaches you go to Age or Obri or Beidu in the south uh, west senatorial district you have natural beaches you go to the central senatorial district it could be the two lobby area they are natural beaches you go to brass you know Akasa, Sangana, they are natural beaches. Are we talking and about underutilization of them or non-use? Of course, they have not even been tapped. They have not, they have not been, been exploited yeah. at all. Yeah. Mm. Know, they have not. Yeah. In those days, in the seventies, you know, foreigners, whites, at the weekend, they come down to these places, spend their weekend from the morning till evening. They go back to worry. They come back the next day. That's what they used to do. But with the insecurity over years, you know, and environmental degradation, you know, they stopped. Hmm. So we want to bring back this, and that is the focus of the, uh, the Henry Selake Dixon's uh, government, to ensure that this that we've lost over time is brought back, and hmm. then it, it, it becomes uh, a money-spinning uh, hmm. That's uh, why it's tourism. called the government of restoration. Okay. Now, Doctor, tell us about the flag. The flag? Mm -hmm. The flag is, is, is just a simple flag. <laughs> yeah, what are the colors of the flag? Oh, what, do they, what do they mean? Oh, okay. is it also work in progress like the No, no, no. The yeah, flag is there. The oh, flag is. is there. The coat of arms is there. Okay. Uh, the flag is, it comprises of four colors. Mm -hmm. um, the four colors are particularly Ijo colors because by essence we are Ijo people. It's just associated with four colors. Mm -hmm. We have the white, mm -hmm. we have the green, we have the blue, and we have the red. Mm -hmm. These are the four colors of the flag. Okay, uh, are they horizontal, vertical? Well, uh, three of them are horizontal, mm -hmm. and one is vertical. The white is vertical. But I, I don't want to say much about it because uh, the law, the House of Assembly has passed the bill, mm -hmm. and the governor is yet to sign it into law. Okay. And for so us it to unveil it okay. to the yes. public, okay. Okay. does not be unveiled. Okay. Okay. Yes. So when do we expect uh, this as final signature to be put on it? Oh, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. The in the just next few weeks. In the next few weeks, the House of Assembly passed it just on Monday. So in the in the, in the next couple of weeks, uh, it will be signed into law and it will be unveiled to the public. Okay. We'll and, invite the, and, and, the the of, and the whole of his own nation will participate in the unveiling process because Bayasa is the center of his own land. Okay. So all those from the other yes, states from will uh, all come, Bomb, come Cross home. River, uh, Delta, in Ondo State, Lagos State, they will all come home. And you're going to Big see event. a great is on day. Okay. So great is on uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> what about the so coat of arms? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, like you said, it it no, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. under wraps. Yeah. Under wraps. Yeah. So okay. okay. The process of rebranding, then, what else does it cover? Because you've just mentioned something that is going to be very, very pivotal to the growth of the economy of uh, Bielsa State. The beaches that you've got and the opportunity for tourism from that state. What else is being rebranded in the state? Well, you see, the uh, rebranding goes to mean, take for example, when you say Bayasa is the Jerusalem of his own land and everybody comes to Bayasa, every Zoma, you know, looks at Bayasa as the capital of his own land. Of course, we're going to annex all our cultures, all our traditions together. And it will be the focal point at, from where you display, you know, the rich culture of his own land. You know, we are creating an identity for the people. That identity will make you behave in a manner that will be contributory to the development and well-being of Bayasa, of his own land, and Nigeria in general. So we are doing a number of things to ensure that Nigeria is better. Not the insinuations that some other people will <laughs> <laughs> like to give to what Bayasans are doing yeah. on behalf but of his own In addition to that, you, uh, when we say you want to rebrand, it's because possibly you had uh, some other name or some other impression or some people had some other impressions of you. Uh, in the past, you know, the violence and insecurity in Bias State had taken its toll and people see Bias State as if it's not, uh, as if it's a very violent place to go to. Sometimes we tell some, I want to go to Bias and say, ah, no, I don't want to go there. So this rebranding, because we, Bayasa is not enjoying peace. The reports you get about Bayasa 
It's more positive than any other time. It's, you even hear crisis in other places more than you now hear about Bayelsa. Peace has returned to Bayelsa. And so the rebranding, we want to also let the world know that Bayelsa is a peaceful place for you to come and visit, for you to come and live, for you to come and do business. So all of it is part of the rebranding. We want people to know the good in Bayelsa, that there is so much good that far overweigh the little negatives that you have heard in the past. Okay, let me bring in Mr. Ikeji, who apart from being a legal practitioner is also a social commentator. Exactly. What do you think about all this that's going on in Bayelsa? I, I think um, just like he, um, the Honorable Commissioner just um, just pointed out presently, you, you see, there is need for the for the um, policy, the Nigerian policy presently, to have a regeneration, a turnaround, a, a, a new phase from violence, from violent agitation to positive agitations. And or to, violence before elections. Or violence before elections, <laughs> as it were. Uh, so it's a commendable effort. While um, I, from the outside, I have looked at it, and I am I am very impressed with the with the intention because it goes a long way to to highlight the importance of tribal identity. In fact, what they are doing presently is helping Nigeria towards its march to true federalism, true federation that we have all been clamoring for. Previously, you like you mentioned. You speak about Bayesa and you speak about mili militancy, mm. you speak about violence. But presently, with this rebranding as it were, from my own perspective, I think that people will now have to be seeing Bayesa from a different perspective. All people of a joint nation will have a common passion, a common passion that will help them contribute to the general and um, polity called Nigeria. So I think that um, the perspective that we ought to look at it from is the perspective of development, perspective of individual identity to promote the general identity of, of, of Nigeria. And um, um, it goes a long way to uh, adumbrate and um, buttress the need to ensure the constitutional rights of nation states. Ijo as a nation has a constitutional right of identity. And I thank um, the, the governor for, for trying to bring out this constitutional rights. As a constitutional rights lawyer myself, I, I, I find it very easy to identify with such situations that will highlight the constitutional rights of a nation, of a national um, group, mm. grouping. No, 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 Doctor, after the rancor that we saw just before the elections, what is the, what is the atmosphere like now? Well, <laughs> yes, I, I, I thought I mentioned a little part of it. Uh, the rebranding is to stop all of those uh, divisions that we have seen. Okay. There was so much rancor, so much disunity among the people, but now there is peace, hmm. security, and a level of understanding beyond what people can see with their eyes. So this so strategy is working? It's working. It's working. It's working. And we want to consolidate on it. Okay. And by providing this cultural identity for all of us, not just only Bayesas, but all Ijo people. Because Bayesa, as my colleague here said, is the hub of Ijo. Jerusalem. Yes. <laughs> in Jerusalem. Yes. Okay, all we can do is just wish you all good luck. And uh, we're waiting with bated breath to see the flag, um, to see the coat of arms, and in time also to listen to the anthem which is supposed to galvanize all Ijo people wherever they may be in Nigeria. An intended and multiplier, positive multiplier effect right. <laughs> on Nigeria. Nigerian polity. Yeah. Mm. Thank, okay. thank you very much for coming. Mm. We've been chatting with Honorable Fred Agwedi, who is essay to the Bayelsa Government on Political Affairs. Dr. Felix mm. Twadolo, who is Bayelsa State Commissioner for Culture and Ijo National Affairs, as well as a legal practitioner and social commentator, Mr. Ikechuku Ikeji. Thank you all very much for coming. Sunrise will return in just a moment with the home stretch. Please stay with us. <laughs>